Hey y'all. So I had a request from one of my YouTube subscribers to talk about how you reclaim mannequins after you run a migration. But first, there's Ollie. Ollie is one of my rescue dogs that I found during COVID. And he is looking out the window because I have the window open because it's kind of nice and cool here in Mississippi today. And that is one of the things he loves to do the most. So, mannequins. When you migrate, say from GitHub Enterprise Server to EMU or a Bitbucket Server to GitHub Enterprise Cloud or EMU using the GitHub Enterprise Importer tool, which I've got previous videos on, when you do those migrations, we migrate the repositories, we migrate metadata like pull request, pull request history, issues, stuff like that. We don't migrate users. And that's because the users have to be created in the, say, EMU by using your Azure Active Directory. There's no easy way or the there's no way at all, really, to migrate the users. So that raises the question, what happens on commits, what happens on issues, and what happens on pull requests, which are all tied to users in the system that you're migrating from? Well, with commits, it's easy. Commits are tied to email address. It's a Git thing. So as long as your email address in the old system is the same as your email address in the new system, the commits are going to automatically light up. And what I mean by light up is they'll be tied to an actual user in your GitHub system. And the when you mouse over the username, it'll show the card that'll show all the user information. Now, obviously, for that to happen, the user has to be created in the system. But once the user gets created in the system, that lighting up just works. For issues and pull requests, though, it's a little bit different. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is just a straight up regular pull request that I've created. You'll notice that my user is Got my image, and if I highlight over my image, it shows me the card that shows me all my details. Um, or even if I highlight over my username, it shows me the card with all my details. And if I click that link, it would take me to the profile for that user. So this is what you want to see. However, this is a pull request of a, of, in a repository that I migrated. A and you'll notice here that even though I had the same username in the old system as in the new system, it doesn't show my icon or image. It doesn't light up and show me a link to, or show me the card that gives me my profile information. And it has this word mannequin out beside it. So what happens is when you migrate using GitHub Enterprise Importer and the issues in the pull requests are still going to be tied to the old user. So it's going to show the old username, the username from the system you're coming from, and it's going to show the keyword mannequin out beside them. Now, do you have to fix this? No. However, think about it. With active pull requests, with active issues, if you don't fix this, then people won't get notifications, they won't get updates, so more than likely, you do want to fix this, especially if you're coming from a system where the old names were maybe some weird uh, user ID or something like that. So how do we fix these mannequin users? Well, you have to map them from the old username into the new username in your new GitHub system. That means that you have to have that user created in your say your enterprise managed user system, and they need to be a member of the organization where the repository is. Because mapping is an org specific function. When you migrate a repo into an organization, you need to map the users in that organization. And then after that, you could move the repo to another org if you wanted to, but you have to map the users in that organization, which means the users have to exist and be a part of that organization. Now, how do you actually map these mannequin users? There's a couple of different ways. The first way is very manual. So you can go to the organization level settings 
and then you can go to Import Export. And this will show you all the different mannequin users that exist in your organization that came in through migrations that you've done. Now to map a user here, I would select a user and I would click Reattribute. Then I would go find the user that I want to reattribute them to. So maybe I want to reattribute them to Mickey Gusey Fabricam. So I would select the user that I want to attribute them to, and then I would click invite. And what happens is that sends an email to this user. So my Mickey Say Fabricam user would get an email and they have, and it would say, hey, we're trying to map you to this user. Is that okay with you? And you have to select, yes, it's okay in the email. You have to click a link in the email to complete the mapping. So while this is a way that you can easily map, you know, one user at a time, it's obviously time consuming, but it also requires the user to accept the mapping. And let's face it, some users aren't going to see the email or they're not going to read it, or even if they read it, they're not going to click the link. So while this is an option for mapping users, it's not necessarily the best option. Ideally, we want to map these users in bulk. And you can do that using the GitHub Enterprise Importer tool. So let's take a look at how we might do that. So we're going to flip over to Okay, so here we are at the command line. And if you'll remember, the GitHub Enterprise Importer tool is simply an extension of the GitHub CLI. So you can see I have the GitHub Enterprise Importer or GEI installed. So I can do a ghgei dash dash version to make sure I'm using the latest version, which I am, great. So if we do a ghgei dash dash help, this will show us all the different options we have or commands that we can run with the GEI tool. And the two commands that we care about are the reclaim mannequin command and the generate mannequin CSV. Generate mannequin CSV will generate a list of mannequin users for an organization. And then we can use the reclaim mannequin to actually map those users to new users. There's some other functionality in there as well. You could use reclaim mannequin from the command line to just map one user if you wanted to, but we're gonna look at how you might want to do this say in bulk. So we're gonna start off by using the generate mannequin CSV. So if we clear this out, we do a ghgei generate mannequin CSV. then you'll notice that it has certain parameters that it requires. It's going to require the org where we're wanting to do the migrate, that we're wanting to map the mannequins to. It's, we need to give it an output file where it can, the CSV file it's going to create. I can decide, do I want to include people that I've already reclaimed once? Because I might want to change who they're mapped to. And then I need to give it a, a, a target path. So a personal access token. Now what I'm gonna do is pause here for a few, for a few minutes. I'm gonna go create an environment variable called ghpath that has my personal access token in it so that honestly, you can't see it. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. So let's actually run this command to create the CSV file that we need. So we'll say ghgei dash dash github target org, which should be Mickey Gusey. Well, let's double check that. Mickey Gusey dash Fabricam. Fabricam. And we're going to say dash dash output and users.csv. I don't have anything I think I've reclaimed right now, so I'm not really worried about including the reclaimed. So we're going to generate this CSV file.
And you can see I did something wrong. The card argument was not provided. Get up target org dash dash output. Oh, because I didn't put the command in front of it, like a doofus. So let's run this again. Well, let's clear this out. Let's get back up to the top. And let's do a, run that command again, but let's actually put the command in there, right? The generate mannequin CSV, duh. And it found 11 mannequins. And if we do an LS, we can see that there's my user's file. If I cat out that user's file, then we can see this is what the mannequin file looks like. You get a header, which has to be there. Don't remove it. And you have three columns. You have the mannequin user name. You have the internal ID based off the organization you're in. And then you have the target username. So I need to come in here and map these appropriately. So let's do a vi users.csv. And in this case, I'm only gonna map one. So I'm gonna map this to my user that I have here. So let's verify my user here, which is Mickey Gousset Fabricam. So I wanna map my Mickey Gousset user to Mickey Gousset Fabricam. Now I'm only going to map this one user in this file right now. So if we clear this out and we cat this file, you'll see that I've mapped only the one user. So given that we've now have the mapping, now I want to run the ghgei reclaim mannequins. Oh, it's reclaim mannequin, it's singular. So let's try that again. Now with the reclaim mannequin command, I could use this just to reclaim one user if I wanted to. But in this case, I've already got my personal access token set. I'm gonna pass in an org name. I'm gonna pass in my CSV file. I can pass in a dash dash force that allows me, if I have remapped somebody to a different user, that allows me to force that to happen. Now, the process will ask you different yes, no questions. So you can always just do a no prompt to skip all of everything with a, with a Y value. So with a yes. And this one, though, is key. This is the skip invitation. Remember, I said before, when you map a user, it sends them an email and they have to click a link. By default, if you don't include this skip invitation um, attribute, then they're still going to get an email. They still have to click a link. By adding in this option, it forces the mapping to happen. They don't get any kind of email. They don't get to choose. It just happens. So let's do a GHGEI reclaim mannequin. We'll do a GitHub target org. It's going to be Mickey Gousset Fabricam. We're going to say dash dash CSV, which is going to be our users.csv file. We're going to don't have to worry about force. We are going to say, and we're going to, usually I would say no prompt, but I'm not going to add the no prompt this time. So you'll see where all it prompts you. But I am going to do the skip invitation, which is what I mostly recommend people always do because Otherwise, you're relying on your users to click yes in the email. So we're going to run this. Oh, I missed a... I messed it up somehow. Skip invitation. Running update version. Oh, I misspelled reclaim mannequin. All right, let's try this again, and let's actually spell the attribute correctly. Reclaim mannequin, and here we go. So now you can see it's prompting me, are you sure you want to continue? This is immediate and irreversible. I'm going to say yes. 
and you'll see it goes. And for the lines that I did not include any sort of mapping, it skipped them. But it did map the one that I did include. So now if we go back over to here and we do a refresh, you can now see that my user is mapped. I don't have a user, an icon really set with my user yet, but my user is now mapped. And when I highlight over them, it shows me the card related to that user. So I've now mapped this user appropriately. And if we go to back to the organization level and we go to settings and we go to import export and we go to attribute invitations, you can see that this attribution has been completed. And there you go. That's how you reclaim mannequin users, and that's how you can map users. Now, the GEI tool is only going to work if you're mapping users um, in enterprise managed users. If you're doing this in, say, a non enterprise organization or something like that, you're going to have to rely on the GraphQL APIs. And the APIs are documented. You can go find those. I'm not going to show those. But for most people that are using the GEI tool, you'll be able to map your users this way. Thanks for watching.